Hello, welcome to Cinema Gulp Today. This is John. And this is Ben. And we're going to do a quick shot review of Hunt for the Wilder People. Regular. We're hoping that this change of scene will help straighten them out. You hungry? That's a silly question, isn't it? Look at you. <laughs> Ricky Baker, now you are 13 years old. You are a teenager and you're as good as gold. Ricky, this is heck. You can call him uncle if you like. No, I can't. Father told me to tell you that you should give me something to do. Is there anything you want me to do? Yeah. Leave me alone. Cool. You ever been up in that jungle before? There's about a million hectares of it, buddy. It's easy to get lost. You lost? Oh. I'm amazed how lost you got. You little oh. bastard! Oh. We got no choice but to camp out here for a few weeks. Where are you, Ricky Baker? More on this massive national manhunt. Faulkner is cork Asian. Well, they got that wrong because you're obviously white. And Taika Waititi's latest film, A National Manhunt, is underway for a young boy with a rebellious streak and his older step-uncle who wants nothing more than to be left alone. The hunt extends throughout the large and dangerous mountains of the New Zealand bush. It's in the bush that the boy Ricky and the step-uncle Heck discover that not only were they both unwanted entities of society in their youth and at present time, but also that they mean more to each other's existence and how they view humanity than they ever would have imagined. Watiti is a master director, leaving nothing out of this film, from the beautifully shot landscapes of the New Zealand countryside to its laugh out loud comedy, everything in this film works. Okay, so as you can tell, John, I'm a huge, huge fan of Hunt for the Wilder People. What'd you think? Yeah, I'm a huge fan as well. It's a small indie movie from New Zealand. Not many people have probably heard of this movie, but it is such a great movie. Everyone should really see this. It is so funny. It's this great character driven film that it's kind of a buddy road movie at times, but every character in it is so funny and well written and so interesting that it's it's just a great character driven film this director is great this is the second film i've seen by him i'm really loving his style um first film that he did that i saw was what we do in the shadows hilarious comedy kind of in the vein of monty python if you like that style this one's a little bit different in the style of humor um and it's definitely a bit more grounded and serious at times um, not as kind of off the wall and wacky as that first film, but this he this director is really uh, making his mark for me. I'm really falling in love with his style and especially his writing. Um, this is a, another film that he wrote. Uh, it's based on a book. The script for this was great. Like we said, it's got such great characters who are well written and fascinating to watch. It's just got everything I want to see from a movie. When I go to the cinema, this is the kind of film that I want to see. Yeah, me too. I think it's a wonderful film. It's full of heart. It's full of energy. It's got great comedy. It's got great timing. It's got great atmosphere, great characters. It's, it's full of hilarious scenes. Ricky Baker, happy birthday. Once rejected, now accepted. And you gotta love a movie where the director Watiti, who, yes, this is, I didn't realize at the time was based off a novel. It could be a small one. I haven't done my research on that. But you can still feel like his presence in the script. There was probably, it was probably based on something, but the comedy and the way the characters interact and the way it's written, that is all like his style. It's charming. It's, it's got moments of intensity. It's got moments of like pain and tragedy that come like really quickly, but then kind of dissolve right back into this great spirit because the movie is just full of this great spirit that makes you feel good while you're watching it and it's not just these forced scenes in any way shape or form everyone in this movie no understands the characters they're playing and the director understands the story that that he's throwing out there at us and every even the little techniques and stuff that he uses as you know kind of an indie filmmaker those things they're, they're fresh and they feel they feel real and you're just so engaged when you're watching them right for sure yeah i was engaged the whole way through this movie is excellent it's it's like a road movie kind of buddy comedy at times 
definitely a character study and I was never bored, not once. Um, this story had me hooked right from the beginning and took me right through to the end. But other than that, man, this movie was perfect in my opinion. And like we said before, there there's definitely some moments that kind of come out of nowhere and are these quick moments of emotion and really do pull on the heartstrings and kind of get you feeling the feels in some of those moments, but it doesn't last long. They don't dwell on the sadness and they move on quickly because this is a quirky comedy. As soon as the next scene comes around, there is great laughs to be had. I'll never stop running. Yeah, and I'll never stop chasing you. I'm relentless. I'm like the Terminator. I'm more like Terminator than you. I said it first, you're more like Sarah Connor in, in the first movie too, before she could do chin-ups. And also this cast was amazing. I gotta say it's filled with a lot of unknowns. I think the only main actor that people would really recognize is Sam Neill. And it was so great to see Sam Neill back on the big screen and in a big role. I can't think of anything I've seen him in recently. He's a great actor. I, I was really impressed with his comedic timing in this film. We've seen him do dramas before and he's great at that and, and he brings a lot of drama to this role in it like we said in some of these serious moments but I was really impressed with his comic timing and, and comic style in this film as well. Well he's a very intense actor and though he's respected he I don't personally I don't think he's in enough films and the way you're right the way he plays it's kind of grizzled seasoned farmer hunter who wants nothing to do with Ricky who's the young boy who we'll get to in a second and then how he evolves into this other character there's I love Sam Neill and I respect him so much for what he's done but he's never really done anything like this to my knowledge he's done lots of thrillers and lots of dramas before we get into some of the side characters, we have to mention Julian Dennison as Ricky, who's essentially the main character. About 12 or 13 year old New Zealand kid. He's a really overweight kid, so it's this really kind of different type of protagonist. But boy, what'd you think of that actor? Yeah, he was excellent. At the beginning when we first meet Ricky, he's kind of quiet and reserved because he's in this new setting and he's meeting new people and he's just not willing to uh, open up to anybody yet. But as soon as he starts becoming familiar with this new setting and feel comfortable with his new foster parents, his character comes to life. He is hilarious. His character grows all throughout the film. There's this wonderful bond between him and Sam Neill's character. Like we said, it is a buddy comedy at times kind of road movie comedy. These two characters together and watching the dynamic between them was the film really and, and was just so excellent to see. Such well-written characters, the two of them. Well, and you realize as the story progresses how much these two actually have in common that they're both sort of unwanted throughout their entire lives and they both were kind of taken in by the same person for very different reasons. But it's, it's interesting and it shows the true mark of like a filmmaker and storyteller when you can take these very tragic characters and turn it into such a joyful events where you know I mean Ricky's this 12 or 13 year old kid and he's no one wants him and he keeps he keeps himself intact somehow by like you said at the beginning he's very quiet it doesn't take him long to show the his new parents who he is but to me like Dennison is a revelation I think he's ridiculously funny charming intense earnest vulnerable he shifts gears as the script calls for it, just like a like a professional. Yeah, like a real pro, I would have to say that. Absolutely. And I can't even do this review without mentioning the scene stealer of a lot of Watiti stuff and also some other stuff, Rice Darby as Psycho Sam, who, again, small part, super effective, super funny, didn't derail anything, wasn't too over the top. That guy is just a genius when he shows up and things to me. And the other scene stealer of the movie that we definitely have to mention is Rachel House. She is the actress, New Zealand actress, many probably haven't heard of, but she is the actress who plays the child service representative who is trying to track down Ricky and bring him back to the foster home. Her character is hilarious. My God, she was just cracking me up through the whole movie. She's constantly treating Ricky like he's a hardened criminal, like he's the, the scourge of the earth and, and he must be stopped. He's a, he's a villain, but really she's kind of the villain of the, of the film. It's all very comedic, but her and her sidekick, who is this cop, he doesn't say a whole lot, but the two of them 
are just this great little comedic duo. Every time they pop into the movie, I was rolling with laughter. <laughs> yeah. And I do want to mention, because her role is small, but very, very vital to the story. I hope I'm getting her name right. Rima Te Waeda. And she plays the auntie who is the one who, who takes Ricky in from Child Protective Services because she's just a good-hearted woman. And she's a real, you know, outback bushwoman of, of New Zealand. So she doesn't always say the right thing. It's always hilarious when mm -hmm. she says the wrong thing. You hungry? That's a silly question, isn't it? Look at you. <laughs> but her heart is in the right place, and it's such a sweet, hilarious performance, even though it doesn't last long. I just loved her in that movie. One of the filmmaking aspects I really enjoyed about this movie was the style of the transitions. Not to get too involved with that aspect as far as editing goes, but the way that it showed progression of time through the six-month journey that this older man and this young boy take, was really astonishing to watch and it did relay to the audience what was happening. And that has a lot to do with the editing. I thought this one particularly was really fantastic on how they shot this movie and how uh, there's so much beautiful scenery to see, but the way that they kind of transitioned through these months and months that they're spending out in the bush, I thought was really creative. We've talked about in some reviews, these films that try to show you this big expansive universe or world that's being brought to the screen, yet the film still feels small or it's got this globe-trotting plot where you're traveling all over the globe or whatever, but the film still feels small because of the way it's shot, because of failings on the director's part. This is a small indie film that takes place in the backwoods uh, brush of, of New Zealand, yet it feels expansive and large and, and beautiful. The scenery is majestic. Well, actually, I'm gonna use a better word than majestic. It's majestical. When you see the film, you'll know what I mean by that, but that is a great way to describe the scenery in this film and just the world they created and brought to the screen and all the wonderful characters they brought to the screen, populating this universe and this world that this movie presents. It feels bigger than some of the big spectacle movies of the summer. Yeah, it's a great balance of wacky off-the-wall characters, adventure, comedy, tenderness. There's some painful scenes in it. There's some really out of the blue, you had no idea were coming, tragic moments, but they're all just so genuine. Genuine. Everything in this movie is genuine to me. I think Watiti has a beautiful visual flair, a real passion for the script, and he has literally perfect comedic timing. To me, if you're looking for something with real spirit, something to say about life, what it means to feel loved, what it means to feel needed, while also making you just laugh out loud, this is the film for your midsummer viewing. I implore people to go see this movie. Trust us, you've gotta see this movie. This is one of the best movies we've seen this year. Blows away all the big spectacle films. Who cares if this is a small film? I've got to highly recommend this to everybody. Go see this in the theater. Definitely put it on your list, on your Netflix or whatever to rent this, because this is a film that should be seen by everybody and enjoyed by everybody because it is that kind of wonderful, lighthearted film that you're gonna walk out with an immense smile on your face. It's really a touching, wonderful film that would be hard to forget. Well, as it stands for me right now, mid-July of 2016, this is my favorite film of the year. It's early in the year, there's always possibility of change, but I was in love with this movie from start to finish. To me, it's nearly perfect. This is such a good movie to make you feel good, make your soul feel good. I think it's refreshing and it's hilarious. There's no way you don't laugh when you watch this movie. So I give it 9.5 gulps. Yeah, I'm right up there with you. I love this movie. One of the, like we said, one of the best we've seen this year. I'm going to give this an 8.5. Okay, everybody, that's our review of Hunt for the Wilder People. As always, please give us a comment below. Make sure you like this video. Check us out on Facebook and Twitter and all the other locations where you can find Cinema Gulp. We drink your cinema. I drink it up! Ricky! 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 Ricky!